Hello, and welcome back to me playing in the Pactoro sandbox. So, this sandbox world is one where I'm trying to make an entire base in a box. Uh, my plan is later that I'm going to have a go at a, a speedrun, um, try and get the under 8 hours achievement. And I'm hoping to be able to put down basically a blueprint that will last me the entire game to rocket launch. Um, so what I'm doing is designing uh, early and mid-game components to do uh, everything needed to get me to rockets, all on a single bus design. Um, I've adapted the research bus I made uh, a couple of months ago. Um, so all the sciences are here and I've tacked on a rocket launching facility on the end. Um, you've seen this before, I've walked through it. Uh, and I've started putting uh, the other things I need on the end here. So I've got an area for making various stuffs. This is the stuff that doesn't need steel. Then this is an area for making other stuffs, including things that need steel and bricks. Um, and I'm going to have another area for other stuffs uh, to do with electronics and railroads. Anyway, that's the bus, um, I got sidetracked because I started wondering what would happen if I tried to smelt steel um, using a beacon setup. So I, I've watched a bunch of videos where people have used direct insert from the um, iron plate to steel spe plate smelters. And you know, it's a perfectly sensible thing to do, except when you add beacons, um, your uh, plate machines, your iron plate machines, are going to be occasionally making an extra uh, plate, and that's enough to try and keep an extra steel machine going. They add up after a while. So what I've been doing is playing around with uh, various ways to get this to work. And here are two of them. So. Um, on the left, we have a setup. Um, there goes a rocket. Uh, and this one doesn't quite work. So the way it works is we have three uh, steel plate smelters. Right, so every now and again, those steel smelt plate smelters will make an extra plate because they've got the uh, productivity in. There it goes. Okay, so uh, what we're doing is feeding slightly more than one of the um, steel smelters by having them share boxes. Now I tried various ways of arranging this and couldn't make it work because uh, I kept running out of space. So I kept putting in re requester and provider chests. I didn't really want to use spot traffic moving the iron plates around uh, to feed the steel uh, smelters. I wanted to use an intermediate box. The trick I found was to use the buffer chests. So what you can do is set up a buffer chest um, so that it requests iron ore, which is fair enough, but in addition to requesting iron ore, you also have it being fed from the steel smelters. Because it's a buffer chest, you can then set up requester chests. Um, all right, let's set up a requester chest. So this requester chest is going to request steel. Let's have it request um, 4K, because that's within the order of what you'd request if you're going to fill train carriages. OK. And these are set up to request from buffer chest. And there you can see it going. So these buffer chests are requesting iron ore, which is coming from these uh, creative mode chests here, and are giving away the steel that's been produced. That means we can have this inserter here coming out, feeding this, then the plates from here go into this iron chest, the iron chest feeds in here, and then this puts the product back in there. That works really well, and it lets us build our build. However, if you watch, sometimes the uh, smelter on the end here and here go red. 
And what's happening is that uh, you can see this is filling up with 100 plates, right? Whereas the end one is out of iron plates. And the reason for this is uh, just the mathematics. We're, we're not putting things onto belts. Uh, so once a plate has been put in here, it's not available to this machine via any route. So these end machines keep running low and these middle machines keep backing up. Uh, the backing up isn't so obvious to see, but the, the red lights really are. The solution to this is to do box balancing using bots, right? So this central item here, um, we're, we're feeding into passive provider chests. On the ends, we have passive, we have requester chests, sorry. Okay, so what happens? These machines take their ore from here, the ore goes in, it gets smelted. Then the smelted ore goes into one of these two provider chests. If this arm gets there, it feeds it straight in to be smelted, keeping this machine going permanently. However, anything the arm doesn't pick up quick enough gets picked up by a bot and carried over to this requester chest. So this machine here is doing its best to fill up that requester chest, but whenever it doesn't keep up, a logistics bot tops it up. So that allows us to balance the load between these. And this is pretty much keeping the uh, steel smelters going most of the time. Um, now this isn't perfectly to ratio, so uh, unless I've done my math completely wrong, uh, what I would need is... Um, is it five steel smelters? Sorry, five irons to keep... No, it'd be four irons to keep five steels going. Um, or maybe it's five to six. Anyway, however it works. Um, yeah, it'd be five to six. But despite it not being perfectly on ratio, you can see that uh, with the load balancing, um, we're keeping most of the lights on green most of the time. So I'll probably make a new build of this where I actually do have five of the plate smelters uh, to six of the um, steel smelters. Uh, that would give us uh, quite a nice number of machines actually running along. Um, but anyway, you can see basically this setup works and it it works because of these um, buffer chests, both being used to request the ore for feeding the whole process and accepting the product. So um, I think this trick potentially fixes various issues I was having with other bot-based builds for things like um, red circuits, where you, you end up with an extra chest somewhere needed. Um, and this trick of using uh, provider and requested chest for the same item type to balance load, um, I think also is quite nice. Um, I've seen red circuit builds where, where there's basically a chain of boxes with inserters balancing over them, but that, it's pretty icky. And to make it work robustly, um, you have to fiddle around with the stack inserter bonuses. So um, let's just put that overlay on just so that we can see exactly what's going on. Yeah, so Basically, it works, doesn't it? Um, that's all I've really got to say today. At some point, I'll get around to finishing the uh, base in a box blueprint down here. Um, and then I'm going to have a run through to see if I can actually get a, a game through from uh, beginning to the very end uh, by using this blueprint. I'm not going to slap down the blueprint in one go. It's going to go down in sections. Uh, but yeah, basically that's the plan. The only other thing I kind of want to do quickly point out here is uh, this is my uh, belt fed setup for researching. Um, and this is the trick I'm using now uh, to feed in four belts worth of research. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've used reds and yellows. Um, so the yellows and reds weave through um, and then we use uh, long arms back to back uh, to pull off both the reds and then both the yellows. Did I say blue a minute ago? Sorry, I meant yellow. 
Um, belt speed is not an issue here. Uh, we never research fast enough to use a, even a full yellow belt. Um, but yeah, there we are. That's the plan. Um, and then everything else, I think the only other changes I've made since the last video on this is uh, I've quite aggressively gone round and downgraded all the belts and loads on the belts um, to use the minimum tier belt that's necessary to provide the throughput. So uh, you, you need less than a half lane of engines and batteries and blue circuits. Um, you actually need a red belt of reds to feed this research setup. Um, a, a yellow belt of reds is just not quite enough. Um, anyway, that's what I've been doing. And uh, one blue belt of copper, two blue and one red of plate of iron plates um, is enough to feed all this. The only other thing while I'm here, um, it's really important now that belts don't stack don't compress properly. Um, where you're merging belts to make sure you've got a fast enough belt underneath the merge point. So uh, even here with these gears, um, I'm merging yellow onto this, which is going to be a yellow belt, um, but there's a single red belt under here on the merge point. Otherwise, um, when this is going at full speed, which it's not now, uh, you don't get fully compressed feeds onto the yellow um, and you actually run dry of red circuits amazingly. So uh, I'm looking forward to when they do something about the side loading belt compression because uh, it's a bit of a pain but uh, in each of the places where it matters, so here again this is a, a yellow feed, uh, this is to make the tier 1 speeds um, but to get it to fully merge, I had to put one piece of red belt underneath uh, and then feed it from both sides. And then that gets compressed down into the yellow speed and that's enough to get the, the lane fully compressed. So um, I don't think there's anything else to show other than um, this is the wonderful new world of uh, splitters. So um, I'm taking off my line of iron here which is going to be used to, to build pipes and gears which then get fed up through various things that need pipes and gears. Uh, so I'm prioritizing taking left. So left left take it off, left left off, left left off and by doing this um, you don't need any complicated balances and if there is one full belt worth of material lying around that one full belt worth of material ends up going up there to, to be made into stuff. The only other thing we could potentially do to uh, improve this is to set an input priority um, right. Yeah, so if we set this to input priority right, and again here, Right, so this is going to tend to drain this outermost belt. And then uh, it'll be much more clear when you're running this uh, in real life, when, the, when it's under load, um, if and when you would need to actually set up another smelter or another train station to feed in a new line of belts from below. Anyway, that's all a bit of an aside. Uh, the bit I wanted to show was this uh, smelting. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, as you can see, I got my mathematics in a muddle. Uh, I'm going to go away with a calculator because I am actually that old and fuddled these days um, and work out how many iron plate machines with a productivity boost of 20% um, actually will feed how many steel machines. But this is basically the unit. So iron machine feeds into a box, which then feeds into steel, fed from a buffer chest, which is requesting the, the ore, and is also where the steel plates are ultimately being put before they're picked up. Okay, thanks very much. Um, look forward to doing another one of these videos soon, and um, all the best to you.